Enermax, the company that likes to redirect air, recently came out with their attempt of a high-performance aerial series. This is the AquaFusion ADV240 Dual Fan CPU AIO with RGB. On paper, it looks fine. They got some patents going on, like a dual chamber pump and water block design, which I believe I have heard like a thousand times, but maybe it's got its own spin to it. Then there is something that they call CCI and SCT, which boils down to short coolant path and precise impact, which Okay, maybe it helps, maybe not. Before we start wandering ourselves into oblivion, let's just jump straight into the benchmark. But before that, this episode is brought to you by scdkey.com. scdkey is a platform to get genuine CD keys for all sorts of games and Steam, Origin or Uplay game keys. But the most exciting aspect for us are the software keys. Do you know that pesky Windows 10 activation message that not even the engineers over at NASA managed to get rid of? Well, scdkey.com can help you with that. Look for Windows 10 Pro OEM that currently goes for just below $22. But before you buy it, make sure to use the promo code STS to get an additional 25% off and enjoy a completely message-free Windows experience. Oh, and you thought this would be exclusively for Windows 10? No. Thanks to Microsoft doing the right thing for once, you can use these Windows 10 OEM codes to activate either a Windows 10 or Windows 11 machine for its complete lifetime. If you want to learn more about scdkey.com, head over to their website or have a look at the other offers in the description below. And don't forget to use the promo code STS because using it saves you exactly one Arctic P12. Using this poor thing, we created three scenarios. A low workload at 120 watts, a mid to high workload at 250 watts and a god tier with good luck of cooling this down at 320 watts. To get our numbers, we switched between the different modes in BIOS with pretty much every imaginable setting locked down. Then we hit the CPU and wait for about 15 minutes until the cooler reached what it can do over a permanent time span. This is especially important on IIOs because it takes some time for the water to heat up. And then we gradually lower the fan speed in 10% steps while keeping the pump at a fixed 100% and note down the CPU package temperature average over 2 minutes and deduct the air temperature in front of the fans to get the temperature above ambient at any given fan setting. For the noise, we positioned the cooler on this table with a dB meter exactly 1 meter away on its own tripod. Then again, pump at 100%, fan at variable speeds and we measure the dBs at any given fan speed. Let's begin with the low workload. At 120 watts going through the socket, the AquaFusion 240 managed to keep the CPU at 32.6 degrees C above ambient. And this is actually an excellent result. At this like gaming type of workload, the 240mm model kept it cooler than a Noxia NHD15, a Liquid Freezer 240 or even 360, and pretty much every other air cooler. And that's interesting, and I believe this could be the case because of that fancy name Anamex used for a short liquid path. The thing is, there are so many things that contribute to how an AIO performs as like a whole. One of these things is how quickly the hot water gets carried away from uh, the CPU. If this is happening at a faster rate, less heat can build up in a single spot resulting in a lower temperature. Of course there are like a, a million other things going on and if the radiator sucks, well then the, the radiator will or the pump will just pull in hot water again from the radiator just to be dumped back into the pool of already hot water and then you can see where this is going. But this could be an explanation as to why it performs so good on that relatively low workload. And the noise to performance graph is showcasing kind of the same thing. The red line represents the AquaFusion ADV240. And that looks like a horrible line because it is so goddamn freaking loud. But actually, it is one of the best because you can push the fan speeds down and down and down and at some point, somewhere between 60 and 50% of the max fan speed, you will end up in front of a Noxia NHD15. Going even lower than that, however, makes it move behind the NHD15. Something also to note here, the cooler never reached noise floor and that's because of the pump. It's not necessarily loud, it is really not loud, it is just 
a bit louder than the one of an Arctic liquid freezer. And the one on the Aqua Fusion was emitting 36.2 dBs at 1 meter, which is about 0.9 dBs higher than noise floor. Hence, the line never reached this line. Also interesting here is the only comparison we got right now for a 240 mil. Even if the Aqua Fusion got some serious headroom compared to the Arctic Liquid Freezer, it is just louder. Unfortunate, but that's what it is. Moving on to 250 watt socket power. At this rate, we can already see the first coolers to fall off the list. At 65.7 degrees C above ambient, the difference to a Liquid Freezer 240 is now 3.3 degrees C, whereas before it was only a degree and a half. Looking at the whole list, the Aqua Fusion 240 actually stands quite strong. Being just behind the 360ml liquid freezer is quite the result. However, interesting here is that it fell behind the NHD15. Okay. On the noise to performance graph, we will see exactly what happens if we pump more heat into the loop. While the Aqua Fusion still managed to run at lower fan speeds, it will never reach the level of a Nokia NHD15, Liquid Freezer 240 or other type of coolers. But hey, it is still a lot better than the Arctic Freezer 50. At 320 watts, yeah, there it was done. I don't think we are going to find a 240ml AIO that can sustain that type of workload for a longer period for the next, next few years, actually. And on that note, also some words on the marketing crap that you'll read left and right. On paper, the Aqua Fusion has a rated TDP of 360 watts. And although we all know that TDP is more of a wish than a spec, the AIO can't survive that, or at least not indefinitely. Of course, the PC will not die if I hit the AIO with 320 watts, but it went above 110 degrees C in a few seconds. So yeah, the, the AIO will do that, but the CPU won't stay at that load for long. So just ignore these numbers and never buy a cooler according to the TDP wishlist of the manufacturer. Anyway, the Anormax AquaFusion ADV240 comes in a pretty standard AO package containing the AO itself, two of Anormax's Squaw 120mm fans, the installation hardware for AMD and Intel, some thermal paste and all sorts of cabling to daisy chain the fans and pump speed and ARGB connectivity. As a little gift, you'll also get an ARGB controller in case your motherboard can't handle this by itself. The tubes are nicely braided and adjustable at the water block, but at 400mm they could have been slightly longer. It's okay for the average build, but like 450 is always just the best thing. On that note, the rat looks quite nice. Animax installed a sort of shroud on it with some additional edges and a logo, which looks okay. It's less boring than the usual rat. But what's good about this is that the ends are kept significantly shorter than we are used to. Both ends of the rat are kept to really an absolute minimum. For the inside, we are looking at 12 water channels at 21 FPI, roughly. But that's a lot of FPI for an AIO. To get any air through the dense radiator, Animax made use of those Squaw 120mm fans rotating at up to 2000 RPM whilst pushing 79.8 CFM at up to 3.6 mm of H2O. A static pressure which is definitely required for the density of this radiator. And before I forget it, RGB, of course there is RGB. The water block got a relatively thick line going all around it with an additional infinity mirror stripe thing in the middle and a glowing Animax logo. All of that looks nice and I would say relatively well implemented, but I'm just not a huge fan of the Infinity Enermax logo, but the eye candy for me is still the fan RGB. We got that partially rounded off stripe going around with some additional lights coming from the center. All in all, it's quite the RGB bomb shell, if you ask me, but I like how they designed the stripes going around the fans. Compatibility-wise, we are looking at an army of sockets, AM5, 4, 3, FM2 and FM1 on AMD, 
And over on Intel, it's LGA 1700, all the way back to 1150s, 2066, 2011-3, and even the 1366 made a reappearance. To install the AIO on AMD, we first need to install the AMD mounting brackets onto the sides of the water block pump combo, then we can remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with these AMD screws. On Intel, we need to take the backplate according to your socket and shove the screws through the appropriate hole while securing them with the washers on the other side. And after placing it behind the motherboard, we can place the spacers onto the other side. From there, on both socket types, mount down the AIO using the thumb screws in an X pattern. So where do we stand with the Enermax AquaFusion ADV240? It's a good 240mm AIO. It's not world blowing, but it beats the Liquid Freezer 240 for both 120 and 250 watt workloads. And that's already something to be proud of. But that being said, the noise to performance ratio is just not perfect. It could have been better, it, it always could have been better, but I believe this AIO has a very specific purpose. I believe it is quite a good match for mid-tier 7700X, 7800X 3D, 7, uh, 13700K, which are primarily used for gaming. In the end, it's quite normal to see 100, 120, 130 watts being pulled by the CPU during gaming sessions. And that's really the workload where the Enermax shines because you can push down the fan speed so dramatically without having a hit in performance. At these loads, it's even better than an Nokia NHD 15, which is hard to beat. But in case that there are spikes, which will happen at some point, or you are doing workloads which are higher than the average gaming load, well, then we have more headroom than, for example, a Arctic Liquid Freezer 240. Of course, at the cost of noise, but we have the headroom and we have the great performance for gaming. And I believe the comparison is quite good because at 84 euros for me right now, the Aqua Fusion is roughly as expensive as the Liquid Freezer 240. So this is really a decision between thermal headroom and a overall quieter operation. But still, on the grand picture, the 240mm version of Anamax's AquaFusion series is a relatively good AIO. You might need to want that infinity mirror, but that's a design thing and that's really up to you. And for us, I think this is it for Anamax and their AquaFusion ADV 240mm AIO. At this point, a huge thank you to them for sending it over. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel memberships, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to investigate what the hell ADV means. What, what, uh, what is ADV? Aqua Direct Visual. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Halo. It's small, yes it is small, but it can push some serious air. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.